Yay! And today we are going to go through another Java coding example called Sum Calculator. Now this one is going to be a little bit different. We are going to start using OOP. For those of you that don't know what OOP is, OOP stands for Object Oriented Programming. It really means that you're setting up your code to be used by others. You know, that's the point of programming is to create a program as a group. Sometimes you do it with others. But anyway, let's get started on the program. So we are going to read the question, then we're going to code on the right side, test it, and then tell the J on the right side. And then once we get it to work, then we are going to test it again against the Udemy testers on the left side. Sum calculator. Write a class with the name simple calculator. The class needs two fields, instant variables with names first number and second number, both of type double. Now, as for all these methods, I'm not really going to do them right now. We're going to kind of work through them. But basically, we have eight methods, some setters, some getters. The first two, as you can see right here, are getters. They have to do with getting the parameters or getting the value. These two setters here, the first two have to do with setting the value of the given field. And then the last four have to do with math. We have an add result, we subtract, and a division, which is just going to get the results of the new field after the given math is performed. Then last but not least, down here at the bottom, we have some test code along with some output. And then we have tips here down at the bottom, just basically telling us we have to account for integer Division also dividing by zero. Okay, so you guys get, you guys, are you getting ready? Are you ready? Well, it's time to get started. So, as we saw at the top, we're going to have two variables. With object oriented, because you only want your variables to be accessible by the class, you set these fields to private. first number is double and the second number is also the double. Now I do uh, something else that you guys may or may not know that we can also um, instead of using getters we can use constructors which I'll be covering in a later video so stay tuned for that. If you guys are wondering what I put on line 9, 11, and 5 this is something called comments. This is how you comment out in Java. I'm putting these here for organizational purposes to help you and myself in terms of organizing the code. Now, I'm going to start doing the getters because they're kind of easy. We're just going to have return types. So the methods are going to be declared public, not static, because if it's static, it can be fully accessible outside of this main method. We don't want them fully accessible outside of the main method. We only want after we have declared an object for the class do we want the method to be able to be pulled. So we have public void and then, oh I did that as a setter. Well, this is supposed to be a getter. So we're going to switch this. The getters don't take any parameters, it just returns. Just to show you guys that I know how to do a getter without IntelliJ being a class. Oh, I just did. Now line 10 through 12 is a getter for first number. We're going to do the same thing for second number. Again, IntelliJ kind of does this for us. So that's all we need to do for the getters and setters here. For the getters of first number and second number. Now we're going to do the setter for first number and second number. So again, it's public 
I'm going to have to center the void to the first number. Then we're going to do the same thing for the second number. Okay, those two are done. So we got the first four methods done easily. And again, for those that aren't sure, setters on lines 9 and 23, these just set the value that we're getting in the main method to the same variable accessible by the class or field accessible by the class in order to have those values the same. So we have those four methods. Now we're going to work on our last four methods which have to do with adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. So to keep it easy, I am going to do the get addition first, and then go on from there. So as we know, we all know how to add, right? Oh, we forgot the return type. The return type is double. So we're going to return. We're going to return get first number plus get second number. Then we are going to do the same thing for subtraction, except we are going to use it as a, we're going to use a variable to store the, the values. Get subtraction result. And again, you don't have to do this. You can always try it the same way we did math. So subtracting the second number from the first number. Right. We're gonna store it in a variable, then we're gonna, we're gonna return that variable. Boom. There's subtraction. I don't know why we're getting this big of void back in there. Let me build it and see if it goes away. Nope, oh, still there. Should we check it out, I guess? Yeah, we know get math result doesn't have. And if you want to know why it's gray and not yellow, like the other ones, it's because it's not being used right now. Okay, so now multiplication. Multiplication we will do exactly the same as math. Get multiplication. So we're going to return your first number times get second number. And last but not least, we are going to do the get division result. Now, get the division result is a little bit different from the other ones. We just read, it says, get double result. Without parameters, it needs to return the result of dividing the field values of the first number by the second number. In the case where the second number then returns zero. Now, they only talk about one, but we have to actually keep into account if the second number is also zero. So, the second and the first number are zero. So, we're just going to take that into account with an old-fashioned if statement. If the second number equals zero or the first number equals zero, we're just going to return zero. Don't forget the semicolon. Then otherwise, what are we going to do? We're just going to divide normally. So return. Second number. Get second number. Divide by 
See what this error is it's gonna give us. Oh, I forgot an extra letter. We're gonna build it real quick. Make sure we don't get any errors there. Then if we scroll down a little bit, we can see the test code. So all you have to do is basically you can either copy and paste this test code or you can type each line individually. I'm just gonna uncomment it out. explain it a little bit okay so on lines 7 through 15 here that you guys can see what we're doing is we are creating an object that's going to call simple calculator class on line 7 and it's going to set the values for the first and second number then it'll return the result of adding the two numbers and subtracting the two numbers then it's going to change the first then it's going to change the values and then show multiplication and division. So let's just run it and see. And then we would test it against the Udemy tester after we check the zeros. So we do see that when it's multiplying or dividing, well, obviously if you multiply anything by zero, it's zero. When you divide anything by zero, it's zero. So if we change this second number to, let's say, 10.2 Okay, you see here we got some elongated decimal number, but the point is we didn't get zero. So we do know it works based on the value being changed. So now let's go ahead and check it against the Udemy tester and see if we get it right against all of their tests. Copy an extra early brace so I need to make sure I delete that. All right, guys, fingers crossed. Okay, sadly, we didn't get it on the first try, but good news is I know how to easily fix the error because we can see here the problem is in the get division results. And as we look on the right hand side on the get re division results. Basically, all I can see here that I did is I divided incorrectly. So if we just switch those around, it should fix the error. Because you have to think about it as if you were physically writing this down on a piece of paper in terms of the way it'll get the result. You can see we got a different result in terms of what we did before. So now let's copy and paste it and see. And yes, sometimes as a programmer, we have a hard time with the simple math because we learn so much complicated stuff. And as you guys can see, we got it. So I wanna thank you guys for getting this far in the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, share the video, leave a comment down below if you learned anything new. And don't forget to have a great day and keep on coding. See you guys next time. Bye!